Algebra 2, 1.3a, Algebraic Expressions. A variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount, and that amount can vary. A constant only represents one number, and it doesn't change. It doesn't vary throughout the expression or the equation. So if x is equal to 5, then x is a constant. It stays the same. And these could change, couldn't they? A, B, and C would be the variables. And yes, x is a variable. It's taking the place of an unknown number, but it's a constant variable. It's a constant number. Algebraic expressions don't have an equal sign. These four represent different algebraic expressions, but you'll notice there's no equal sign. Algebraic equations do have an equal sign. See? It's just the same as these, except now they have an equal sign. Well, I don't have absolute value of y minus 4, but there's equal signs in the equations. And both the equations and expressions include numbers, variables, and math symbols and signs like plus, minus, square root, radical sign. See? They can even have absolute value signs. So the only thing that's different about them is this one doesn't have an equal sign and this one does. See? They both have terms. This has got three terms, one, two, three that are separated by plus signs. And each term is separated by a plus or minus sign, OK? So whenever we substitute numbers for variables in an expression, we can solve the expression for the value of the variables. So if we didn't know what x and y was, but it said let x equal 2 and y equals 3, well, we could substitute the amounts 2 and 3 in for x and y and say, oh, x and y is 6. We know x and y equals 6. See? This is called evaluating the expression. If we see that 3y plus x for x equals 2 and y equals 4, then we can evaluate this expression and put an equal sign on it and say 3 times 4 plus 2, because y is 4 and x is 2, and we get 14. Now we've evaluated that expression. Now it turned into an equation, didn't it? Now I want you to think of each variable as a blank line. And I talked about this in Algebra 1. Back in grade school, you saw 2 plus blank equals 5, or you know something along that line. You filled in the blank, right? Well, think of each variable as an actual blank line, like from grade school. So 2 plus something equals a negative 1. So we could say x. We don't know what that amount is, so we're just going to say x. 2 plus x equals a negative 1. Well, if x equals a negative 3, then this x is a negative 3 all by itself without anything to do with the sign in front of it. See that? Each variable can be a negative or positive in its own right, regardless of the sign to its left. If we see negative times negative x and x is a negative 5, well, this x alone is a negative 5. So it's got nothing to do with this negative sign in front of the x. We have to add another negative sign. See? So now we have three negative signs. And when there's an odd number of negative signs, three is an odd number. When there's three negative signs, our answer, our product, is going to be negative. See? We're going to multiply the negative to the negative and get a positive, and then that positive to that negative and get a negative. Or we could just do it quickly like we learned in Algebra 1 and just say, OK, there's an odd number of negatives. It's going to be negative, and I know it's a 5. And there's an invisible 1 next to the negative sign and the parentheses, isn't there? There's even an invisible 1 in front of this x whenever there's a variable. So we're saying negative 1 times negative 5 gives us a positive 5 because we have like signs. Then we're doing negative 5, I'm sorry, negative 1 times positive 5. And because they're unlike signs, it gives us the negative. See? So just remember there's actually an invisible 1 by each negative sign and each lone variable as its coefficient. It's our buddy, the invisible 1. It's always there. So there's one here. See, there's one here, right, like that. And now, because y is equal to negative 3 on its own, that has nothing to do with that negative sign, that negative sign ends up becoming here with its negative 1, and we plug in negative 3 for the y. 
we count how many negative signs we've got. We've got one, two, three, four. That's an even amount of negative signs. So our answer is going to be positive. Isn't that cool how that works? It's only for negatives, though. So look at this little chart. If you have an odd amount of negative numbers, it's going to be negative. And if you have an even amount of negative numbers, it'll be positive. Odd amount of negatives. It's got no, it's not odd amount of positives, okay? This only works for negatives when you see a bunch of negatives, all right? A whole string of negatives. So if there's an odd number of them, we count them up. We got one, two, three negative signs. So it's an odd number. Three is an odd number. So we know the answer, the product, is going to be an, a negative. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five negative signs. Five is an odd number. So we know whatever this is after we finish multiplying it the product's going to be a negative because there's an odd amount of negative numbers here we have one two negative signs well two is an even number so that means our answer our product's going to be a positive see that here we've got one two three four negative signs four is an even number so when we finish multiplying these the answer is going to be a positive it's an even amount of negatives see that so you can actually use this. You might want to write this down somewhere in your notes, inside your cover of your folder or something, so you can find it on the pocket if you've got a five-star folder. And that way you'll be able to refer to it real quick. All right? Evens and odds. And did you know that x and y, or variables in an equation or expression, can have the same amount? They can have the same value? If we saw x times y equals 9, and it said that x equaled 3, well, 3 times 3 is 9, so we know y equals 3. So that can happen in algebra. Don't let that flip you out or confuse you. Sometimes, in the same expression or equation, two variables will have the same value, all right? And remember that absolute value is how far a number is away from 0 on a number line. It's how many hops it is, regardless of its positive or negative sign, okay? And our next video is going to be 1.3b. We're going to talk about expressions and the number properties, like the properties like commutative property, associative property, identity property, multiplicative. So let's check this video out, and if you want to check out any of the other previous videos for Chapter 1, just go to the description, and they're one click away, and you can watch them, all right? Each one of my videos uses information from the previous video, like one long Scheherazade story, okay? So if you missed one of my videos, you might get confused in the next one, all right? This is an algebra course. This isn't just for watching one or two videos. This is an entire algebra course, all right? They're all in order. I'll see you next video. Bye.